This week on Great British Menu, three of the most exciting chefs on the London and South East restaurant scene. Michelin starred returning contender Matt Gillen. I'm just on fire, mate, I'm sorry. Head chef at Marcus Waring's two star restaurant, Mark Freudeland. It's tough, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. And rising star Lee Westcott. It's a lot of pressure, eh? are competing for the chance to cook at a banquet, celebrating 100 years of the Women's Institute at London's magnificent Draper's Hall. For yesterday's starter course, young gun Lee stunned his Michelin-starred rivals by taking a two-point lead. I think you really pulled it off. In today's fish course, Lee's desperate to stay on top. I'm first up, and I'm, I'm, I'm already feeling the pressure. But returning contender Matt is out to topple the new kid on the block and impress former boss Daniel Clifford. Five from the starters, uh, not where I wanted to be. My battle plan for today is absolutely nail my dish. Whilst ambitious Mark is determined to keep his cool in the kitchen and claw back valuable points. Uh, two points isn't a lot, but it does seem like it right now. This year, the chefs are celebrating the centenary of the Women's Institute and paying tribute to those pioneering women who've helped put British cuisine on the map. To research the history of the organisation, they've visited local groups. We have had several campaigns to promote British milk. I joined immediately I left school. I'm not saying how you And taken inspiration from the women in their own families. Hey, hi, Mum. Hi, how are you? to take home-cooked classics Shepherd's pie. to new gastronomic heights. It tastes amazing. It's like cake in a glass. <laughs> Judging them all week is Daniel Clifford, holder of two Michelin stars and twice a banquet champion. I'm looking for home-cooked fish. That's what I think this brief represents. I just hope that they don't bring restaurant dishes to the pass that don't represent the WI. So guys, how are you feeling? A little deflated after the starter, but fish call snacks, so I'm, I'm raring to go on this one. Now I know what he's looking for. Uh, hopefully, uh, he's going to like this dish a lot more. Two points ahead. He must be wanting to keep that lead, though. Uh, of course. You know, I'm, I'm going to try and do everything I can to sort of keep you guys at bay, you know? But, I'm, you know, I'm still really nervous. <laughs> First up is rising star Lee Westcott. His menu pays tribute to the crafts and causes of the WI. It does feel good knowing that I'm two points above the other two. I'd like to keep that lead that I have. It would be a nice confidence boost. How are you? Yeah, good. How are you feeling? Excited, nervous. Well, you're Same. in the lead. Yep, I so am. So you've got to keep it now, haven't you, really? Yeah, maybe that's a bit more pressure, eh? So explain the dish to me. So this, this chef is called a modern bouquet. OK. The idea behind that is the, the Women's Institute did a lot of crafts, okay. and flower arrangement was one of them. So for me, I just wanted to kind of Honour that and do a bit of a take on it. First of all, we've got the mackerel. Yeah. I'm going to classically pan fry it. I'm going to do that with um, fennel. Is that going to be raw, cooked? This is going to be confit. Adds a little bit of texture to it. And then with a the dill, I'm going to make a, a broth. OK. You've got some passion fruit here. I do a dish, mackerel and passion fruit. And what's this one here? This is quinoa. OK. I've been deep frying it, and that's my texture to the dish. And then I'm going to make a, a Japanese dressing. Here we have some, some yuzu dressing. OK, how are you going to dress this? So it's two plates. The bowl underneath will have a few pebbles, moss. And then you've got some edible flowers, some modern bouquet. And I want them to enhance the dish at the end. Um, there'll be dry ice underneath. Is that going to go into the room smoking, or is it that'll, done? That'll go into the room. I want that theatrical okay. factor. This one, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident with this one. OK. He's called it a modern bouquet. I'm really excited about it. It's whether he can deliver the impact and the story I'm looking for. Next is returning contender and Michelin star holder Matt Gillen, whose menu is inspired by the WI's history over the last century. Yesterday, he scored five for a starter Daniel thought lacked flair. I'm absolutely determined to make sure that everything is perfect. Daniel loves this dish and that I creep ahead of both boys. So tell me the inspiration about this dish, because it looks like a massive box of ingredients. This is jamming and canning. This is the next step in my timeline. OK. 
this is based around the time when preservation was huge for the Brooks yeah. Institute. And you know, jam is one of the things that they're probably most famous for. Every ingredient in this box will have some sort of process of preservation okay. applied to it. So, we've got salmon. So I'm going to do three techniques with the salmon. Three. Three. So I'm going to take the fat part of the yeah. salmon and I'm going to cure it, poach it in duck fat. The confit, but in duck fat. The confit, but in duck fat, and okay. then pan fry it. Um, we'll take some of the belly and tinned anchovies, again, the canning element, yeah. and we'll make a ballantine. And then with the tail, I'm going to cold smoke it, freeze it, and grate it over the top. So it's just a hint of smoke going through the dish as well. Cool, you've got a lot going on here. I know. I know. That's, ju that's just the salmon. So moving on to the jam, I'm doing two jams. Two jams? Yeah, two jams. I'm going to do a bacon jam. Bacon and fish? Yeah. OK. Yeah. And the second jam is tomato jam. And this is going to be made in a much more classic way than the bacon jam. OK. Um, I came across a recipe while I was kind of looking through the WI's history for salted runner beans, and <laughs> it wasn't very nice. So runner these, beans. they used to preserve these to keep them for longer? Yes. Yeah. And you Literally, tried it and it's not very nice? It's, it's not. And then you put it on pleasure. the menu? So, so I've, I've adapted okay. the technique. Yeah. I'm not quite taken back, actually. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to quite enjoy standing there watching you cook. What do you think, Lee? I'm intrigued. I'll be honest with you, I think he's going to be a really busy boy. I do as well. Yeah. Gentlemen canning. I'm really interested in this. On that starter, it was one flavour and it went throughout the whole dish. This one, he's got a hundred things going on. It could be a touch of genius or it could be a complete car crash. Finally, head chef at Marcus Waring's two-star restaurant, Mark Freudeland. His menu is inspired by the women in his family, but he scored just five points for a starter Daniel felt was too rich. It's a little less technical than the starter, and, and it's a bit lighter as well, so hopefully that should fit in well with what Daniel's looking for. So, Mark, take me through your box. So this is going to be a dressed salmon. Dressed salmon is something that you read up a lot about. Most of, most of what I'm doing is based on, on a, a sort of family memory of, of dressed salmon. If we're having a birthday or a big celebration, Mum would always wheel out the dressed salmon. Really? Yeah, you, it wouldn't be a proper celebration without I've only ever salmon. done one myself, it's, yeah. and it was a disaster. <laughs> How are you going to do it? It's not going to be traditionally presented. Um, first of all, with the fish, I'm going to cure the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to take off the belly, pickle that, um, and that's going to be charred. And then we're going to have poached pieces of the, of the salmon. Yep. And then some pickles, pickled pieces of flesh as well. So it's not going to be a dressed salmon no. as, our, as we'd know it? No. Right. But, then, but then I will be using the bones as part of the presentation. Um, and then all the other garnishes are, are just taken from, from the classic dressed salmon. For, instead of lettuce leaves around the outside, I'm going to make a lettuce puree. And then instead of uh, peeled prawns around the outside, which is what, what Mum would have done, uh, I'm going to make a, a shellfish uh, emulsion. So roasted lobster bones, uh, reduced down, and then blended into a mayonnaise. And then uh, the, the pickled cucumber. So instead of scales uh, on the fish, we're going to do some, some ribbons of cucumber pickled. For some extra flavour, the cockles, which I think is just a, a great ingredient. Um, so they're going to be crispy. Okay. Is this a strong dish for you? Yeah, I think it is. As a centrepiece for a, for a banquet, it's, it's perfect. Mark's party piece. He's making a classic dish that everybody knows. He's going to put some twists on it. It's whether them twists actually make the dish better. You've got a massive challenge ahead of you. He looks like he's got to go at 100 miles an hour, but you're not far behind him. Let's see some great dishes. Good luck. With cooking underway, the chefs know they're at a crucial stage in the competition. Super important, this fish course. Coming off uh, a five from the starter is, uh, is not where I wanted to be going into this. I think this is a tough one. I think if the fish is hard, it's, there's a lot to do. The flavours are strong, and I think that's it's going to be an advantage. I'm happy for what I got last round, but I'm first up, and I'm, I'm, I'm already feeling the pressure. In joint last place, returning contender Matt is out to overtake his rivals with jamming and canning, a highly complex fish dish containing 14 elements. <laughs> He's cooking salmon three ways, as well as two jams, tomato, and an unconventional bacon jam. You know, Matt, He's a great cook. He knows exactly what he's got to do. He's clearly practiced this dish. I'm just concerned. There's so much going on. Is there going to be a fight on the plate, or is this going to be harmony? Rising star Lee took the lead over his rivals with his starter. Today, he's hoping his simply cooked mackerel with floral presentation will keep him in front. He works on a Japanese dressing to complement the fish and deep fries quinoa. 
How you getting on, Lee? Yeah, not bad, Chef. Prepping the maximum down now, we've got a little bit of time. Japanese dressing? You happy with it? Yeah, I'm really happy with that. What do you think? Different. He's really calm in there, he's pushing himself. But is it going to be WI? I'm not 100% sure. Yesterday, Mark, who heads up Marcus Waring's two Michelin star kitchen, forgot a crucial element on his starter. Determined to make amends, he's pushing hard with his party piece dish, a modern take on dressed salmon. He starts his lobster emulsion and cockle sauce. It's really hot in here, which, which definitely doesn't help. Uh, it only adds to the pressure. Both Mark and Matt cure salmon chunks in salt mix before chilling. I don't think there's a comparison. I think salmon's something that springs to a lot of people's minds when they think of the WI, think of home cooking. And that's why I think we've seen two salmon dishes here today. To find inspiration for his spin on a dressed salmon, Mark travelled to Leon Sea to visit his mum, Karen. Hello, darling. How are you? Well, oh, excellent to see you. Here you are, Mark. Making your homemade beef burgers. I think you're about ten there. Very they good. This is the one I remember. The dressed salmon. That was <clears throat> Dad's 40th birthday. And uh, Nan, my mum, she said, uh, you must have a, a dressed salmon at the party. I think that's why it's such a perfect dish to have at the banquet. Because yeah. it's such a, such a centrepiece. Yeah. It will really <laughs> suit the celebration. To see if his version is up to scratch, Mark's prepping a sample to take to a local WI group. How long did it used to take you to put yours together? Well, um, I have a little confession, really. I didn't used to make the dress salmon. I used to buy it in from... You used to buy them? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> At the South End Sisters branch of the WI, they're celebrating their group's third anniversary. Hello. Good evening. Happy birthday. From humble beginnings, the South End sisters have grown in number, as Mark learned from secretary Felicity Squire. There are four friends. We lived in the area, and we wanted to join the local WI, but it was completely full and had a waiting list. So we thought, right, let's just find out how you open one. And three years later, here we are. It's amazing. Yeah. So 100 years old, the organization is still, still going strong. Finally, the moment of truth. Mark's hoping to get the group's seal of approval for his salmon. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. My salmon doesn't come out like that. <laughs> I think it's worthy of the WI banquet. I think they're going to love it. I'm really pleased that the South End sisters like the, the dressed salmon and it's, it's sort of confirmed to me that, that it's the right dish to celebrate the, the centenary of the WI. Back in the kitchen, Mark, who is joint last with Matt, is working on the lettuce element of his dressed salmon, a puree with fennel. Mark, how's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Just a so bit what's hot. going on here? We've got the lettuce puree. Oh, is this the lettuce puree? Yeah. Does this work? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, it's not that strong in flavour, but it's going to go with the uh, strong flavour, so you've got the cockle sauce. Um, so it's, it's got to compete with all of that. OK. It's clear it's a family favourite. He's turned it on his head. Is this going to be too simple to win him the fish course? Guys, where are the backpack bags, please? For current leader Lee's mackerel dish, timing is key. He must cook his only fish element to perfection at the last minute. What's your major risk point on this? For me, it's cooking the mackerel and just getting there on time, because it's a bit embarrassing being late, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit embarrassed. Doesn't make Daniel happy. Across the kitchen, Matt is pushing to impress Daniel with his complicated jamming and canning dish, his homage to the WI's preserving techniques. I don't know about you guys, but I've got a fair amount to do. He vacuum packs runner beans in salt and sugar, before moving on to his ballotine of salmon and canned anchovy, which he then chills but it's his jams that have caught Daniel's eye. So, Matt, where are you? We're jamming. We're jamming? OK, so, baking jam. What makes this a jam, then? 
Uh, it's not a classic jam at all. Um, however, within the, within the context of the dish, uh, I think it'll be really enjoyable. Have you tasted these boys? I haven't, no. no. <laughs> well, give them a go. Is that a jam to you? What's this one, Matt? Is this uh, tomato jam, Lee? Yeah, it is, yeah. And this one? Is it the bacon? the bacon jam. Yeah. Strange texture. But I like the flavour. It's all about the flavour. Right. I, uh, I'm happy with it. Good luck. <laughs> the, the jam tasting session that unnerved me a little bit. Um, bacon jam was uh, a little bit controversial. Hopefully, in the final dish, I can win him over and, uh, yeah, he'll be, he'll be jamming. To claw back points with his party piece dressed salmon, Mark is pushing hard. He takes his cured salmon and pickles chunks in sugar, vinegar, and lime. Time's still pressure, um, and there's a lot to put together at the last minute here. Then puree's lobster emulsion mix ready for piping. Maybe the pressure has got to a little bit because they're uh, two points behind me. Two points isn't a lot, but it does seem like it right now. With time running out, Matt vacuum packs salmon chunks with duck fat for his confit. While Lee works on two cucumber elements of his mackerel dish, compressed balls and a cucumber and fennel water. You know, Lee's got all these beautiful tastes and textures. My only concern is, does this come together as a dish at the end? Lee is first to plate up his modern bouquet fish dish, inspired by the crafts of the WI. And he's yet to cook the centerpiece, pan-fried mackerel. Slightly nervous, um, but I think I'm on track on this one. He plates up pickled cucumber, confit fennel, cucumber balls, and passion fruit gel before topping off with crispy quinoa. Right, lemon, please, Sam. Finally, he gets his mackerel fillets into the pan before placing them flesh side down in a warm Japanese dressing. He adds dry ice to a presentation bowl and crisps the skin of the mackerel with a blowtorch. Got a minute to the parsley. Yes, yeah, chef. He tops with mackerel and garnishes with passion fruit seeds. How long, please, uh, chef? I need you to come to the vast now, really. Then serves his cucumber and fennel water in teapots and adds edible flowers. Right, Yes, please. Finish off. OK. An extra layer of crispy quinoa goes on. And finally, he activates the dry ice with scented water. Happy? Yeah. Yeah? What do you think, boys? Impressive. Is this dish possible for a large amount of people? Um, I think if this was to get through to the banquet, it would have to be adjusted. It's a lot in there, isn't it? It is quite a lot, yeah. Are you happy with the balance of flavours? Yeah. I think maybe a touch more salt on the mackerel, if I'm very honest. More salt? A tiny bit more salt on the mackerel. Mm -hmm. I think it's light, but I think it's where it should it's, be. Yeah, it's bang on. Quinoa, the consistency of that, is that right? Yeah, it's very crispy. Do with more quinoa. It wants a bit more. You kind of miss it. More of that, bit more texture. Do you think it needs the flowers? I think it does. I think it's a nice floral taste at the end. A little, just that little, it lingers in your mouth. I'm not really sure the flowers add anything to the taste of the dish. I think the ladies from the WI will appreciate your cooking. I think they'll love the theatrical part of it. I would personally give this um, nine. Maybe with how harsh Daniel's been, it's going to be, it's going to be an eight. What would you score that? I'd score that between a, a seven and an eight. Hey, man. Hello, mate. Hey, boys. Yeah. All right? How was it? I don't know. I don't know what you think, you know. You don't give much away. So... Next to the pass is Mark. In joint last place with Matt, he's hoping his party piece, a tribute to his mum's dressed salmon, will push him ahead of his rivals. How you feeling? Yeah, all right. You ready? Right. Get in there, yeah. Mark starts by deep-frying cockles and charring his pickled salmon pieces with a blowtorch. Onto a serving platter, he arranges the salmon head and bones, pickled salmon chunks, and pickled cucumber ribbons. 
He then pipes on lobster emulsion and adds crispy cockles. How long you got to be up in the pot? Two minutes. He adds lettuce puree to a serving plate with lobster emulsion and garnishes with a crumble of olives and cooked fish skin before adding the poached salmon and filling serving jugs with cockle sauce. There you are. OK. It's the party piece. How do we eat it? So it's to share. Just taking each of the elements here. Poached piece there. OK. And a bit of the charred belly, a bit of the pickle with the fillet. A perfect dish for the banquet. This is your interpretation of a British classic. Yeah, this is the party piece. Just to enhance the flavour a little more, we've got a cockle sauce. Do you think the guests will be a little bit frightened of a whole salmon it's, head looking at them? It is a little bit scary, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's quite intimidating. This is the poached salmon, yeah? Yeah. To be honest, that's perfect. Mm. Texture, everything was there on it. I'm folding. The pickled salmon, are you happy with the, the pickling of that? Yeah, I think it's enough. I quite like it. Different. It's a bit of a surprise as well, actually. Mm. Chard belly. You feel that's cooked perfectly? Yeah, I, th I think this is the best part. It's, it's full of flavour. Here we have a crispy cockle. Is that the texture you were looking for? I think it's, it's still nice and crispy. I mean, it could have been a bit crispier. So a lobster, a lobster emulsion, a lobster mayonnaise. Tasty now. That's lovely. The lettuce puree. Do you think that's adding to the flavours? I think, I think the, the flavour of the lettuce could be brought out a bit more. I'm going to give this an eight. I think an eight. Um, visually, it's, it needs a little bit of work. Hi, Mark. Hi, guys. How'd it go? I was pleased. You know, I think the dish is as it should be. It's just whether he thinks it's suitable for a banquet. Returning contender Matt is last to plate up. Determined to overtake leader Lee with his jamming and canning, a complex dish of 14 elements. Matt deep fries canned anchovies and finishes the cured salmon in the pan. How are you getting on, Matt? Yeah, all right. Just hoping I've done enough. Onto a salt serving block, he centers seaweed yogurt, adds a slice of salmon and anchovy ballotine, followed by bacon jam, tomato jam, shallot and caper dressing, and salted runner beans. It's always horrible when you stand here. Yeah. He adds cured salmon, anchovy beignet, and finally, grates on frozen smoked salmon trimmings. So, how are we going to eat this? Mm. Knife and fork. Just, Just don't dive in. Matt, do you feel that the WI will understand exactly what you're saying by the, the visual impact of your dish? Yes, uh, you know, with the salt block and everything, but if you were to put that dish on a plain white plate, then maybe it wouldn't be so obvious. Um, I think that might be quite difficult to eat off. I think I want you to taste the tomato jam first. Are you happy with the texture? Yeah, I quite like it. It works nicely with the dish. This is the bacon. So this is the bacon jam. Do you think the WI are going to give you a gold medal for that jam? I think if you put it into a, a jam-making contest, then no. I think all their jam's pushing it a bit. So it's the, the cured, comfy, pan-roasted salmon. Is that the consistency he's looking for? Yeah, so we've got nice crispy skin on there, but it hasn't touched the pan anywhere else, so you get two textures within that one piece of fish. This is the belly of the salmon okay. with the tin anchovies, ballotine and then rolled in seaweed. You're happy with the seasoning of that? With the seasoning, yeah. I think you can really taste that seaweed on the outside. Yeah, you definitely get it at the ends. These are the salted runner beans. Is that the consistency you're looking for? Could you have been a tiny bit crunchier? Really good. Not salty at all. The grated smoked salmon. Does that add something to the dish? Um, not as much as I thought it would, actually. I think you got a tiny bit of the smokiness, but by the time we, we got to eat it, it was, uh, it was pretty much gone. What would you score at? I would score this dish an eight. An eight? I would give this an eight. I think I'll probably give it a seven. Hey, Matt. How was it? I don't know, to be honest. I went, I went into this dish super confident. Like, I'm hoping this is 
going to pull it back for me. I was happy with my fish dish, uh, but definitely a higher mark than I got for the starter. You know, I really hope my fish dish keeps me a little bit ahead of you guys. It would be nice to go into the main course with that, that sort of safety net. Yeah, I bet it would. <laughs> So for the fish course, how did you find it? It's tough. Very tough. Yeah, another tough one. I'm going to start with you, Lee, and your modern bouquet. The mackerel was perfectly cooked. The quinoa brought a lovely crunch to the plate. I really enjoyed that texture. And the passion fruit really worked with the fish. It had theatre. I really believed this hit the brief. However, I think the dish needs a little bit more thought. There is parts when you're all over the place trying to get them last elements on the dish. You just need to organise yourself before you go to service. Mark, for your party piece, the cooking I thought was very skillful. The salmon had a real melt-in-your-mouth texture. The crispy cockles, brilliant idea, really brought a wow factor to that dish. Mark, you've taken a classic dressed salmon and you've modified it radically. This was a big risk. And I'm not 100% sure you pulled it off. Matt, for your jamming and canning. The elements of your dish tasted great. The tomato and the bacon jam were really pleasant. The runner beans, and they're not my favourite, I think they're probably the nicest runner beans I've ever had. However, I felt like it was all going to fall off the side of the plate. It was near enough impossible to eat from. So, for the scores, I'm going to start with you, Matt. I'm going to give you a score of Seven. You just need to work on your presentation. Mark, I'm going to give you a score of seven. The dish was delicious, but the whole fish is going to be slightly off-putting to the rest of the guests. Lee? I'm going to give you a nine, Lee. All the flavours worked really, really well together. I thought that was the dish of the day. It's a big day tomorrow. Main course is the one that everybody wants to win. Sleep well. Well done, mate. Yeah, main course is the biggie. Is it the course yeah. everyone wants to win? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's the main event. I'm really happy that I got a nine for the fish course. I've worked really hard to make sure that it went up as, as good as I wanted it to. You know? With two courses down, Lee's held his lead on 16 points, with Mark and Matt trailing on 12. I need to be getting a, an 8 or a 9. I'm super confident with my main course. If I get it right, I will leave the boys standing. Stripping off the hairy biker's northern exposure, sampling the delights of Finland from saunas to hot pots next, then stripping back a brand new singing contest with nothing but their voices. The Naked Choir with Gareth Malone in an hour and tuning up for a preview straight after this.